<laughs> the unturned map Buwak came out just one day ago, but through the power of the unturned map editor and the countless amount of players who have spent their day grinding out the map, we already have access to the map's full story, lore, and ending. And today, I'm going to try and explain the story of Buwak. Buwak is a map set on an island cut off of Canada, probably not representing a real place like PEI, but a setting nonetheless. When a player spawns in, they immediately face the danger of zombies, animals, and strange skinwalker-like creatures. Upon traveling further into the island, the player can find a group of survivors set up in a camp, stating that they came over on boats in the past. Once acquainted with these survivors, the player is tasked with completing various missions, eventually leading the players down a seldom visited basement. Once entering this basement, the player is sent to a nightmare-like world full of lighthouses with dark glowing eyes, and the full story begins. You see, the red eyes in these lighthouses aren't anything new. Nine years ago, the Unturned Update 2.2.2 came out, and quickly a strange video appeared showing a lighthouse in an Unturned server suddenly gaining glowing red eyes, and the player spoke about a lighthouse ghost with red eyes, supposedly coming to kill them. It seems as if this ghost is back in Buwak, and is back to haunt the player, or even worse, the island itself. The player is able to reach a large black lighthouse, taller than the rest, at the end of a pier, and upon climbing to the top can look at a moon with the soul crystal design on it, the same design seen in Russia. And then, they are teleported to a room with a girl in all black, naming herself Anthe Grimm. Anthe Grimm explains that she's dead, and for a long time, has been trapped inside of a soul crystal the same soul crystals that can be seen in Russia, and is unable to move. She asks the player to track down other corrupted souls to feed to the soul crystal in order to free her. She gives the player a key to the lighthouse on the real Buwak Island, and after reminding the player to keep their sanity, allows the player to be on their way. It is important to note that the player can see Yante turn into Anomaly 7 monster for short durations of time throughout their interaction. Upon leaving the soul crystal, the player is back in the cellar and can be on their way to the lighthouse. Upon reaching the lighthouse, they go through a portal leading into the nightmare realm from before and enter a large room with the soul crystal in the middle, presumably the one that traps Anthe. Additionally, there are four doors in the room, each with their own key lock. Upon entering the first door, the player enters a boss fight with a mega zombie titled The Little Lad, and upon defeating this boss, the player is sent to another room. This room is in the past, and my theory is that it is a memory in the eyes of Anthe Grimm, being one of the first test subjects of Scorpion 7. Here Zachary Zacherson states that he is the manager of the Buwak Scorpion 7, and that the location is testing on bringing people back from the dead. He says that there may be some side effects or consequences, but doesn't consider them to be much of a problem. He also states that the location is working on robotic arms to do work for reaching up to high boxes and other tasks. After the memory of the old Scorpion 7 lab, the player is brought back to the Soul Crystal with Anthe where she thanks the player for defeating the first boss, and tells the player to go and defeat the bosses behind the last three doors. Upon defeating the second boss, the player is once again brought to the Scorpion 7 lab, but this time almost as a spectator with other scientists in the lab and not noticing them. It is seen that this is also a memory though, as upon attempting to interact with the first scientist, they are turned into a schizophrenic and teleport away. Shortly after, an announcement comes on the speaker system in the lab, stating that the mechanical arms mentioned previously had been sold and were now being used to build tanks and missiles. This is referencing how to at Zavod on the Russia map. Similar looking mechanical arms can be seen, giving this map its third tie to Russia, as the Russian government seems to have funded this Scorpion 7 branch. The announcement also states that rat poison has killed many test subjects, making it clear that the cure from death still hasn't been worked out. Deeper in the lab, the player can run into a sad-looking Anthe sitting on a bench, and further along, the player can walk past doors labeled Anomaly 1 through 6, each containing different mutated players, all likely results of human testing of the death cure. Upon reaching the Anomaly 1 door, the player enters an observation room where they can see a giant skeleton, the same seen in the underground segment of the present Scorpion 7 lab, and most likely the scariest of the anomalies. Throughout the lab, the player could also have read or listened to voice recordings and clipboards, each containing information of Scorpion 7 workers and their concerns on the reanimation project. Upon returning to Anthe, she expresses her dismay for the people working at Scorpion 7 as they let the test subject suffer. 
She also explains that the Soul Crystal was a prison made by the people at Scorpion 7, possibly explaining the origin of the Soul Crystal seen in Russia. After defeating the third boss, the player can enter the Scorpion 7 laboratory at night time, walk through it, and leave as if in the eyes of Anthe or perhaps a scientist. Upon reaching the car, the player is brought back to the Soul Crystal, where chains of spines can be seen circling the room, and a large beating heart can be seen at the center. Anthe reveals her understanding of the world of Unturned, overrun by zombies, and monologues on how Scorpion 7 engineered them through the reanimation project to make them incredibly strong. She says that the Turned, the subjects, and her shouldn't be the only ones to suffer, so while revealing her anomaly form with scorpion arms and all, she tells the player to kill the last one, revealing the location of the last key. After this, the player is sent to spectate Ante's encounter with the skeleton anomaly seen before, Anomaly 1, where it teleports behind her for a short period of time, making her flicker into her scorpion anomaly form. Afterwards, Ante passes out. I believe this skeleton has been on the island of Huwak for a very long time, possibly back to when the aliens first visited planet Earth, as seen in previous Unturned lore videos by names such as the Knight Rider. And the organization of Scorpion 7 attempted to use the skeleton to harness the power of eternal life, only for it to be a dangerous anomaly. The player is then able to spectate an interaction between Anthe and a scientist, where she is told that the Anomaly 7 incident the day before shows that Anthe is extremely powerful and the Scorpion 7 wishes to test on her. The player is then sent to a spectate an announcement that Zachary gives to the scientists of Buwak Scorpion 7 that the facility is running out of money. He says that the officials are attempting to start more projects in other locations for the reanimation project, and that some scientists will be relocated to PEI. On the PEI map, through analyses of the lore, it can be seen that a Scorpion 7 location used to be located on the south of the map, but was then relocated to Washington due to an event. This shows how the reanimation project spread throughout most of the world, and how the turned ended up everywhere that they are, as originally, Buak was a secluded island. After Zachary's announcement, a worker runs in explaining that Anthe had broken out of containment and was killing scientists. The player is then sent to spectate Anthe, Zachary, and a scientist in the woods, with Anthe on the ground after being shot by Zachary. Zachary expresses his dismay due to Anthe's attempt to stop Zachary in his attempt to cure death. Anthe starts to get angry and for a moment turns into her scorpion form, but is then shot dead by Zachary. Zachary tells the scientist to leave Anthe's body in the woods and then get back to work. This is possibly the last moment that Anthe was on Earth before being trapped in the Soul Crystal. At the end of this, the player returns to the Soul Crystal with Anthe, where she states that she now remembers how she died and that it's time for the Soul Crystal to do its thing as the player has killed all four of the bosses, the little lad, Paul Woodman, Kylan Anderson, and Zachary Zacherson. The Soul Crystal activates, showing the colors of the Soul Crystals that can be seen in Russia, green, yellow, and purple, and then a large laser beam like the one that makes up the Shadow Stalker Mark II can be seen extending from the Soul Crystal, knocking Anthe back, and then disappearing. Anthe, believing that her escape from the Soul Crystal has failed, begins to express her feelings on how some are left to suffer, when a great light illuminates the room of the Soul Crystal and her and the player are teleported to the factory where the survivor camp is set up, concluding the story in a, what seems to be a happy ending where the player is instructed by the reborn Anthe to visit the lighthouse for the map's credits. Now that we have the story out of the way, let's discuss how this connects to the rest of Unturned lore, and also what happened. We know that this all happened before the Unturned outbreak, as it is the scientific events that led to the zombie virus, or rather the zombie mutation as we now know it, that had taken over the world. We know for sure that Russia sponsored the reanimation project of Scorpion 7 through the purchasing of mechanical arms for use in Zavod. To elaborate, here's a timeline. The first event is that Scorpion 7 is made, and the reanimation project begins at the Buwak branch. The second is that Anthe's life goes by and her soul is sealed away in the soul crystal built by Scorpion 7. So, quite possibly, maybe they didn't leave her body in the woods like Zachary had initially said. Then, the zombie mutant outbreak starts. This is most likely the events that occurred in Washington and PEI as well as other maps where we can see that Scorpion 7 containers have been breached. Next. The players of Unturned spot the Red Eyes in the Lighthouse in Update 2.2.2. This of course happened after the outbreak as it is in the game Unturned, and whether it is a myth for the game or not, it is now considered canonical. 
Then, the player enters the island of Buak and completes the story with Ante, freeing her from the soul crystal that Scorpion 7 built, essentially resurrecting her, while also spreading the three colored soul crystals and possibly some of the power from the Shadow Stalker Mark II, or possibly the power that made the Shadow Stalker Mark II. Regardless, it is all stuff that is later seen in Russia. And then, with that, the Soul Crystal sign is spotted under St. Petersburg and Russia, and using the phrase, Anastasia opens it up. And with this, Anastasia means rebirth or resurrection, so it could, can be assumed that the story of Ante's rebirth has been brought through Russia through some sort of word of mouth or possibly the power of the Soul Crystals, and so now the spirit of the Soul Crystals have entered Russia, bringing Russia's lore to what is the Russian map now. It is possible that the, soul that the souls of the boss zombies trapped inside of the soul crystals are now trying to escape, or maybe something to do with the pirate zombie on Russia. It is also important to note that the elemental boss zombies seen in Buak are also seen in Russia, so it is very possible that there is a strong connection between these two maps, uh, possibly being that a lot of the lore from Buak eventually migrated over to Russia. To wrap things up, I believe that the Soul Crystals are the only way of true resurrection in the Unturned storyline, especially since they took the bones of the pirate zombie in Russia and resurrected him into a fightable boss. Additionally, they resurrected Anthe and worked in the storyline of Russia's secret Scorpion 7 labs, teleporting the player to and from them. It's pretty ironic that Zachary hated and ignored the only person that tried to warn him about his own experiments and was the only person who could possibly control the soul crystals that could actually resurrect people. After recording this original script, I went to the Unturned Bunker wiki and looked for the anomaly seen in the lighthouse in version 2.2.2, and it is confirmable that this is known as Anomaly 7, meaning that it could have some connection with Scorpion 7. And it could also have a connection with Ante, because Ante is known as Anomaly 7 in the Buonk storyline. So this could reinforce the fact that Ante is those glowing red eyes seen in the lighthouse, and she is haunted over multiple unturned maps after being sealed inside of the soul crystal, and that perhaps Buonk is the only time that she's been able to communicate with players and be able to free herself. Additionally, story from Players of Unturned about some sort of lighthouse ghost seem to match up the description of the schizophrenics or just anomalies that can be seen down in the Buak mines. So perhaps this also has some sort of connection. Anyway, this is all the lore that I've been able to find and organize for the new Buak map. If there's anything that I missed, comment it down below. And uh, anyway, I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs>